Well, I mean, you're talking about essentially the missing link, right? In terms of, you know, the, the Darwin philosophy is that humans evolve from monkeys, but they can't find any DNA that is the link between monkeys and humans. Correct. It just, not that it doesn't exist, it just hasn't been found. Hasn't and been we've found. we've been constantly, you know, you constantly hear stories of, oh, we just found this one uh, ancient human here, we found this ancient monkey here, but yet they can't link the DNA from a monkey to a human to show that it actually evolved from one to another. So people aren't really sure. People aren't really sure where humans came from completely, to I, be honest. I, I can speculate, but I don't have the proof. I, I suspect there has been some interface between early uh, hominids and uh, life forms that are more advanced from other star systems that could have resulted in us. Now, mm -hmm. can that be proven? Probably the people who have the bodies of these ET folks maybe could prove that, but I can't. I'm speculating. So now the other big question becomes, there was a group of computer scientists a few years ago that calculated that the, uh, the genetic, let's call it the genome of the whole planet, all the genetic material in life, for it to be here, would uh, take about four and a half billion years under normal mutation Darwinian selection. But there's only been life on Earth for 700 million years. So how did that accelerated uh, diversity and biodiversity happen on this planet? Because it doesn't fit any of the mathematical and scientific models for natural selection, natural mutations, et cetera. And so you know, they brought this up only as a big question without an answer. So I think there are a lot of questions. I mean, most of what I think we need to find out and discover isn't known yet, but I think that this area of, of UAPs and extraterrestrial intelligence is going to hold a lot of the keys to it, um, which I think is very exciting in many ways. But, you know, those issues I think are secondary to um, the problems with governance, the misuse of these technologies by an unchecked power, uh, up to and including weapons of mass destruction and all kinds of trouble being created around the world. And also what we've lost. That's why I call it the lost century. Why are we still burning jet fuel and oil and gas? And your electric car is plugged into a coal fired and gas fired power grid. Not to mention the 900 pounds of lithium ion batteries are an environmental holocaust. So there are a lot of really kind of good, feel good environmental things out there. And I have the largest legal solar farm in Virginia at my farm in Virginia near Thomas Jefferson's house, but it won't even run the house. And it, you know, it was a huge investment. So the problem is, is that we're facing some really existential crises and we're, we're fiddling while Rome burns. We really need to bring out these heretofore classified technologies that would fix it. I, I think the problems we're facing have a solution that already exists, but they have to be disclosed carefully. Well, yeah, I remember discussing, there, there were some articles that were circulating where some people had theories that religion was actually introduced by aliens in an effort to keep humans from just killing each other early on. <laughs> you know, me personally, I'm not very religious, but I can't see how religion has kept societies, especially more ancient societies, together and being kind to one another and having a set of rules that everyone abides by as opposed to, I'm hungry, I'm going to take whatever I need. Uh, I don't like this person, I'm going to kill whoever I want to kill. You know, there is some sort of basis of it and people are saying that this was something that, you know, I mean, there's always the theories that aliens have come in during key parts of human history to try to sway humans from destroying each other you know do you have any sort of thoughts on this or have you heard anything substantial behind these these types of theories yeah i don't know that those the origins are of extraterrestrial um you know basis for religions i think that there have been a number of things in ancient times that you could easily mistake as supernatural that was extraterrestrial now that, that was and, and let me explain why if you were to go back 200 years and show Thomas Jefferson your cell phone or uh, an iWatch or whatever, it would look like 
magic. You, and, it, and if you were in Massachusetts and Salem, you'd be burned at the stake as a witch. So, <laughs> you know, one civilization's everyday technology is a, a less developed civilization's magic. So I think that there have been events that have occurred in the past that have been mythologized in various traditions that may very well have been some sort of extraterrestrial phenomenon. And, and, and that would make a lot of sense because how would you know otherwise? It's like The Gods Must Be Crazy, that movie, if you've ever seen it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, uh, where you know someone throws a Coke bottle or something out of an airplane and it becomes this uh, object of great wonder and then fighting over it. And then they're having a holy war over this thing, right? Uh, and that's a movie, but it was really more based on the, the what we call the cargo cults in the Pacific during World War II, there were air islands that had never seen human advanced uh, technology such as airplanes and one landed. And when we came back, they had made a whole statue like a God to the pilot and the airplane. It's, it's a great book. And it shows how humans can take something they don't really understand and turn it into an object of religious reverence, right? Uh, and I'm not saying that all religion is based on that at all. I'm just saying that there, there certainly has been some crossover of people having experiences with extraterrestrial intelligence because the experiences my group have had with, with these civilizations, boy, it'd be very easy to confuse that with something from another, you know, an angelic realm or something like that if you didn't know what the distinctions were. Um, by the way, you know, people bring up things like Bigfoot and what have you. One last category of strangeness I haven't discussed that's also gets thrown in here in the blender of confusion, the great scrambled huevos of our brains, is the, uh, the things like that that are actually interdimensional. So there are phenomena that are emerging from other dimensions that occasionally interface with this dimension of 3D space-time, and people will call them alien, but they're not. So this is a little more of a nuance, but since you brought it up earlier, I thought I'd provide that point of clarification. Uh, a lot of people will see something like that, and there is evidence for strange, like stranger things, right? Um, and those can be from another dimension, but they're not of extraterrestrial. An extraterrestrial biological entity is from another star system and planet. But here's where you get the crossover confusion. To go from point A to B, they are dropping out of linear space-time and traversing other dimensions. So some of the phenomenon that's extraterrestrial looks very, very close to something from another dimension. You know, almost like poltergeist or what have you. So all of this has to be, I, I wrote a whole section of one of my books on uh, extraterrestrials and the new cosmology, that we sort of need a new cosmological order and phyla and understanding uh, to be able to distinguish between uh, man-made stagecraft, extraterrestrial, and other, let's just call it weird stuff and strange stuff. Um, but what we live in a time where people don't want to exert the intellectual discipline to do that nuancing, and they just lump everything together. So now the alien is so popular. That's why I don't use the word alien. Because to me, alien has become sort of a catch-all term for everything people don't understand. And in reality, it's several things. 